Hi, it's Lou from Christian Faith and Fiction. Today I want to share with you some books that are coming out in the next four months that I am most interested in. They are Christian fiction books. They are from a range of publishers and a range of different genres, although I tend to mostly like to read contemporary romance, historical fiction and fantasy and sci-fi. So I'm going to go through them in the order that they are coming out, like the months they're coming out. In May, we've got Loyally Luke by Pepper Basham. This is a book three in this particular series. It's following like three different cousins who are looking for love. And it's the first book that I've read had... Um, sort of emails and messages as well as some narration. I have the second book to read soon so I would like to pick up this third book. It's following Luke who is the male cousin. It is described as a flannel wearing man's man inexplicably finds himself living out all the rom-com movie tropes as he falls in love with a true blue princess. I think that's going to be rom-com and fun. I don't know if it's going to have much Christian content in it but um, it, I'm expecting it to be completely clean and yeah revisiting some of the characters that I've liked before. Then also in May we've got Love Overboard by Shannon Sue Dunlap and this is described as a snort laughing cruise ship romance takes readers into topsy-turvy waters. When a group of four quirky friends retire on a never-ending round of cruises, their attire consists of more than floral shirts and gaudy, shirts, gaudy skirts. While armed with walkie-talkies and battle plans, these relationship experts, who dub themselves the Shippers, target hostess Lacey Anderson and director Jonathan King in their romantic schemes. So I'm expecting this to be like a rom-com and a bit love boat, maybe, cruise ships, um... It looks good fun, the cover looks very kind of modern and fun, quirky. Interested in picking that one up at some point. And the third book in May is another romance and it's Sunflower Farms Redemption by Stacey Strong. I have been thinking about picking up one of the love inspired books at some point. This one basically interests me because of the Sunflower Farm reference. I just, I think that sounds like a really good summary romantic setting, a sunflower farm. Working side by side for the Sunflower Festival, Rose sets out to prove Jessie can leave the property in her capable hands. I don't know how much faith content are in the love inspired books, but I've been obviously been including them in my um, new releases videos. So I'll be interested to see if I pick up some of them at some point and this one as I say, the setting is what interests me. In June, Born of Gilded Mountains by Amanda Dykes is coming out and she is an author that I have enjoyed um, in the past. Two of her books have been like five star books for me. She writes very lyrical, poetic almost, descriptive um, language and they usually are a dual time period for this one. Not sure. When newcomer Mercy Windsor arrives in Mercy Peak in 1948, after a scandal shatters her gilded world as Hollywood's beloved leading lady, she is determined to forge a new life in obscurity in this time-forgotten Colorado haven. There's something about a railway engine, galloping goose engine, that vanished with a mailbag containing contents that could change the course of countless lives and a fabled treasure, silent witnesses, the ghost of the past. Don't know if this one is going to be dual time or just historical fiction but I do enjoy her style of writing so yeah I'll be interested to see how that one um, plays out. Then we have the Hudson Collection by Jocelyn Green. This is book two in this series. The first book was The Metropolitan Affair, which I really enjoyed. It is set in New York, that one, and it was a kind of romantic mystery um, suspense book, um, historical fiction again. This one is following Elsa, who 
He's dreamed of working as an ornithologist at the American Museum of Natural History. She's assigned to catalogue the bequest of a recently deceased patron whose gothic country mansion holds secrets and treasures waiting to be discovered. She seems to have problems with her health and there's a lot of secrets there which she's got to untangle. Um, I like the time period. I enjoyed the first book in the series so this is one I definitely want to pick up. The Shadow Within by Karen Hancock is book two in the Legends of the Guardian King series. This is being re-released in hardback and it was originally published in 2004. So 20 years later they're re releasing them in a new hardback editions. I am currently reading the first book in that series so if I enjoy that one I will definitely want to pick up the second one this year. If they have won awards for um, Christian fantasy. I am definitely look always on the lookout for new Christian fantasy series to read. And then finally in June, Her Part to Play by Jenny Erlingson is coming out. And this is following a Dan who accepts a last minute job as a makeup artist for a movie filming in her small Alabama hometown. And John Pope, who has his share of mistakes over the years, but after turning his life over to God and enduring a messy breakup, is ready to start rebuilding his career. So another Christian contemporary romance, I think. Uh, sounds like it is a makeup artist and a star. Yeah, well, I have hopes for this one that it will be a good um, Christian contemporary romance as it's mentioning faith in the synopsis. That gives me hope that there will be some good faith content in that one. In July, Courtney Welsh has a book called The Summer of Yes, which I'm not sure whether this will have Christian um, content in it, but yeah, another contemporary romance with a yellow themed book cover, definitely going with my outfit today. A near-death experience catapults workaholic junior editor Kelsey Worthington into changing her life one yes at a time. So she ends up in hospital and meets an older woman who um, who is very successful and the two of them end up going on this summer where they are saying yes to adventures. Two stories of love, forgiveness, regret and romance. So I think this could be a really interesting story of friendships between um, different generations and yeah it sounds like it could be fun summer, um, a summer romance although maybe friendship and romance as well. Then Rachel Hawke has Meet at the Starlight um, coming out in July and this is dual time book set in the 30s and the 80s. 80s supermodel Harlow Hayes seeks solace in a quaint Florida beach town to hide and heal from a heartbreak that shattered her entire world. And she ends up at the starlight I presume meeting Matt Knight, a Hollywood A-lister with a bad boy reputation. I've enjoyed Rachel Hawke's books in the past. The 80s is a bit strange to me to see it as a historical fiction uh, because I've lived through it, but I was a child, so not quite in the same way that this would have been. But yeah, I still want to pick it up because it's Rachel Hawke. Meeting Her Match by Jen Tirano is the book three in this series that's coming out. I read book one. I still need to read book two, so at some point I definitely will be reading book three. And this one is following Miss Camilla Pierpont, a renowned matchmaker, influential member of the New York 400, who has vowed never to marry after suffering a devastating heartbreak during her debut years ago. The first book was really good fun and I enjoyed that sort of style. Um, the eccentricity of the characters and just the fun of it. I do need to pick up that second book um, before I get to this one but at some point I definitely want to read it. And lastly coming out in July is The Nightmare Virus by Nadine Brandes. I'm not totally sure what this one's going to be like but I have read a book by her before and she's quite a popular fantasy sci-fi kind of author in the Christian community so it yeah I probably will give it a go at some point at least like the sample chapters of it. Some viruses go after the body but the nightmare virus goes after the mind. 
when dream technology goes wrong, a virus spreads across the globe, trapping people in a universal dreamscape. Screen, dreamscape, they call it the nightmare virus. Forced to navigate a world of night beasts, mist blades, and half truths. I don't know how much Christian faith is going to be in that one, but yeah, it sounds interesting. It depends how dark it is, whether I would enjoy it or not. So, as I say, I'll try the sample chapters I think before picking that one up but it does sound interesting and then finally in August uh, Tracking Tilly by Janice Thompson this one seems to be a cosy mystery and it's who stole Tilly from the auction block breathe in the nostalgia of everything old red truck in one in book one of a cosy mystery series uh, so they've just done like all the dog related cosy mystery ones I think and now this one seems to be, I don't know what the series is going to be like, but it seems to be a, a stolen car or a stolen classic car, old car, old truck. Uh, I do like mysteries and I do particularly like them when they don't have murder in them. So I'm, I'm interested to find out what this book is going to be like. It sounds like quite a light kind of mystery to me. Um, I love the problem solving of mystery but without the darkness and the gritty and the goriness and so yeah. Also in August Winter's Maiden by Morgan L. Bussey is coming out. This I believe is a prequel to one of her earlier um, series which I haven't read so I'm hoping that you might be able to read it without having read that um, having read that series but yes, Morgan Elbussey has written a series, the, um, the Ravenwood Saga, which I totally enjoyed, I really enjoyed. So I'm really interested to see what this one's going to be like. From the moment she is born, Brigitte fights to survive in the wastelands of Nordica as a clanless one. But when a new power arrives, offering a trial to join the Nordic warriors, Brigitte enters, hoping to rise above her station. I am hoping this has some Christian faith allegory in there. Um, her books so far definitely have done for the ones that I've read. So yeah, I'm I'm really hopeful for this one and look forward to it later in the year. And the final book that I want to highlight for the moment is Beyond Ivy Walls by Rachel Fordham. This is billed as Beauty and the Beast Meets a Light Between Oceans in historic small town America where a wealthy reclusive bachelor and an unlikely ally join forces to solve a family secret and inadvertently find belonging along the way. So historical fiction, beauty and the beast type of book. Yes, I enjoy that. I don't know how much Christian faith content will be in there, but the story sounds like it would be one that I would enjoy. Okay, so let me know in the comments if any of those sound interesting to you and which book you're most excited about reading that is coming out over the summer months of this year. I hope you're having a really great reading week at the moment. If you'd like to watch more videos about Christian fiction, you can watch these over here. And until next time, I pray God bless you and your family and I'll see you again.